I think that this staff, they got to get all of these guys. Like, to, it can't be baby steps. I just, I, I'm, I would love to be a fly on a wall in the coach's office when they did a review of what, what, what did they do that was well and what did they do that wasn't good enough a year ago. I'd love to know what those internal reviews, those audits look like because – there's a there's a, so little was done last year that a lot is left to do this year. And I think we thought year two under Sarkeesian would be about taking a step forward, but not needing to take six steps forward. And, you know, this is kind of where we are coming off of what ended up being a five and seven season. The good news for this team is I still don't think that the expectations are going to be out tremendously out of whack going into this season because I don't in January don't know what to expect from anybody other than really Xavier Worthy and Bijan Robinson like I feel like I know what those dudes can do and what they will do it's the other 20 starters including the kicking game we haven't talked enough you know replacing Cam- Cameron Dicker is a major off-season priority that could cost them a game or two because Texas went from having arguably the best or second best kicker punter combination in the big 12, which doesn't seem like a big deal in a five and seven year to on paper, potentially having the worst on paper. It's hard for me to believe that there's a worst team on paper in the big 12 with regard to place kicker punter going into the year. I mean, it's completely unproven. We, I don't even know that we truly have a gauge for who the hell's doing field goals in September. Mm-hmm. We can say the true freshman, Will Stone, but is that really? No. <laughs> is I mean, is I said that really? Draft, but I, I mean, that was just like, yeah, that, that was my like last pick. And I was just like, you know, you just take a flyer and just like, I hope he hits. Well, if he does, it, it's a huge hit. But Again, when we talk about what do we expect from this group of guys on this team, I have no idea what we're going to, we'll do videos throughout the off season about special teams. Mm-hmm. I have no idea what to expect. What, what's the proper set of expectations considering Texas was very good in the kicking game a year ago. They're a very much a question mark in that area. And it's like, just throw that on the pile of things that this staff has got to figure out. Cameron Dicker answered a lot of questions for them a year ago. And now those questions reappear. And man, you'd like to have a team where that's like the only thing you have to worry about. Oh, we got to figure out the kicking game so it doesn't cost us a game. Mm -hmm. But we got everything else we feel good about. This is just like another thing that they have to worry about. And when you have a young quarterback, an inexperienced offensive line, and a defense that you don't feel good about playing in a bunch of 50-50 games, kicking game issues are a bit of a concern. Okay, look. But by I'm the way, can I just add on to that? Just add yeah. on to that real quick. We didn't realize how valuable a puncher was until Michael Dixon. Yeah. And then you saw Michael Dixon, you're like, oh, so this is what it's like when you have an elite punter who can change the field, you know? I mean, to the point that this guy was an MVP of a bowl game. And then Texas, so you had those, the Michael Dixon years, then you get that kind of replaced by Cameron Dicker, who we end up saying, I think you and I would have done the same thing. We thought he was probably a better punter than he was a kicker, which is a high compliment and high praise either way, um, based on what he's able to do kicking wise. But everything with special teams catch, you don't realize how much you need them until they're gone. Like you don't, you don't realize how valuable your long snapper is until the thing is being <laughs> thrown sideways, <laughs> rolling, going over a guy's head. That's when you realize who the hell's a long snapper, right? You, you don't realize how valuable your punter is until you get a 35 yard punt and realize how valuable your kicker is when you're trying to line up for 40 or within and you're missing it, you know, at, at different times or missing extra points. So and just just adding in on it, it is it's one of those things that you take for granted. But in these close games, 50 50 games, the little things matter and who punts and who kicks, it, it, whether it's Pearson, whether it's as a punter, whether it's Stone, 
Like it will matter. For going into November, Dicker was having a better year punting the ball than Dixon did in his final season at Texas. Now his numbers fell off towards the end, but for a large portion of this season, Dicker was at first team, all big 12 kind of level success. And then he ended up being like the second or third best punter in the big 12. That's still nothing really to sneeze at because boy, if you could go through every position on the team and say, yeah, we're getting like top three in the big 12 production from everybody. This team's really, really good. Um, Looking at the clock, knowing that I wanted to, I don't know, wrap up quickly. A few more NFL championship weekend hot takes. I have a huge, I have a huge overreaction. Okay. Patrick Mahomes flinched big time yesterday. And now when you look back, they've had four straight AFC championship games at home. They're going to come out of that with one Super Bowl win. It's actually not good enough. It actually, for me, somewhat damages what Andy Reid has done in Kansas City. I feel like we're going to look back at this window and go, that could have been two or three championships, and maybe it should have been. Kansas City should be in the Super Bowl. They, the way that they managed, the end of that game in overtime yesterday, one week after Andy Reid said, when it, go, when it gets grim, become the grim reaper. Ugh. Spoke too soon. I, if that had been Matt Stafford, and to be fair, Matt Stafford and Jimmy Garofalo both tried to throw the game away. Like, <laughs> Matt Stafford, right, the 49ers yeah, yeah. should be in the Super Bowl. Yes. That, that 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 he will live with that one. That's a hell. That of was one. Jackie Smith esque. Yeah. Can't but the way think there was a oh by the way, Tony. What was Tony Rome? What were they talking about during the game? Like you got to get down to the one and run the clock all the way down. And I'm not so sure that Tony Romo knew the score of the game in the last two minutes of the AFC championship game yesterday that they came away from all of that, kicking a long field goal. (laughs) It makes the conversation that they were having about running clock and getting it to the one yard line. I don't know. They needed to score a damn touchdown is what they needed. And in the end, Mahomes was so poor in that last two minutes and going into overtime, he took that critical sack. He just – I i think of him as a guy that could be an all-time great, and that was such a flinching moment that all-time great quarterbacks this deep into their NFL careers typically don't make on that stage. Typically. And it's so tough because – I mean, he had the miracle last week, right? So, you know, it's kind of like, but yeah, there was definitely, he blinked, you know, he definitely blinked and you, we're not used to him blinking like that, but he did blink and yeah, it, it's, you know, you can't lose that game. Not supposed to lose that game. Not, 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 not in your crib. Oh, like, 18. Unacceptable. Un, unacceptable in every way. But, but I will say this, what am I last? The memes that resulted from that game about Mahomes, his wife, the the brother, those have been so amazing. I've been more than amused. I'm just going to be honest with you. I have seen no less than 10, and I can't say I didn't laugh at either one, any of them. I think I laughed at all of them. I think the Chiefs, Andy Reid with the rhetoric about the Grim Reaper and the fuss that was made – over the divisional, like it was as if a lot of people treated that game like the Super Bowl had occurred that night. And it's a reminder of what would have happened to the U.S. Olympic team in 1980 hadn't come out and won the gold medal game. Mm -hmm. Like the two nights after beating the Russians, you have to do the whole thing. You have to go the distance. And in the end, that playoff game against the Bills is a nothing burger. 
It just, it's insignificant. Right? In the history of pro football, when do we look back into games that involved teams that didn't make it to the Super Bowl and treat it like a big deal? Maybe that Terrell Owens catch against the Packers in the end zone, but you know, that's one, that's, a, that's me pulling a random game out of thin air from the last quarter century. Like, it's amazing how big of a re- – they were potentially on the cusp of true, I don't want to say dynasty greatness, but if you win two Super Bowls in four years and you get to three and you still want to roll, you get to call yourself potentially a dynasty in the making. And now I feel like I'm viewing Kansas City and what's happening with Mahomes in Kansas City – it's slightly underwhelming. I mean, when it's all said and done, Pat Mahomes may have as many Super Bowl rings in his career as Matt Stafford when this thing is all said and done. Which, by the way, that's going to be my parting shot, my final thought. Um, as a guy who covered Matt in, in Detroit for a few years, and in fact, I was in Tampa when he got drafted, and Tampa, uh, Detroit had drafted – um Stafford the Jets had drafted Sanchez in that year uh, I think it was 2009 and then the Bucks had drafted Josh Freeman uh that year and so I remember being in Tampa you know with a, more of a Tampa angle thinking okay who was going to be the best of it if I remember I think Stafford may have gotten hurt in year one and, and Freeman actually wasn't bad to start off with and so, you know, so I, and then Stafford eventually took off, but I, but it was always to go from a statistical standpoint, I was always kind of like sketch just because the guy had Calvin Johnson. I mean, that guy was, is one of the greatest receivers to ever play the game. Like it, for those who remember seeing it, it, I mean, this is a guy who they would triple team him, team him catch. They'd have two guys on him and a gunner and to try to stop him. And he would still get, get, get loose but Detroit never really had that much success. I would, I've always been iffy on Stafford. I wasn't quite sure what he would do with the Rams. I've, I've been waiting for some of the, the meltdowns that I'm so used to seeing him have in, in Detroit. He had a lot of good come from behind victories, but the meltdowns too. He's 21 of 40, 45, 337, two touchdowns, and one interception, a 96.2 passer rating. He knows who his bread and butter is. I, I was just shocked. Uh, you know, by some of the single coverage on Cooper Cup. I, I don't don't get it, uh, but not, needless to say, that's a safety blanket, and Cooper's yard after catch is great. So as for me, the last thing I'm going to say is, Stafford, I doubted you, wasn't quite sure you would make it to this point, but you did. Props to you, props to your family. Good, Good-ass quarterback. I'm rooting for him. I'm hoping that he pulls it through. Texas guy. Not University of Texas, but you know, native native of the state, nonetheless. Guy that I'm sure you're familiar with, catch that uh, from the, those days. I know Georgia was always kind of the thing for him, but I got to give Matt Stafford his props today, catch for uh, guiding that team and getting them to where they need to be. It was pretty good. I, I, I was rooting for Stafford to get there. I don't know why. Maybe just because he's a Texas guy, and I I, I tend to root for Texas guys. Yeah. which is a weird tribal thing to do, right? Like, I'm just going to irrationally root for anybody who has a Texas guy playing at quarterback or whatever. But I was kind of there yesterday. I couldn't believe he got away with the interception that was dropped. Correct. It was in real time in like a span of about 120 seconds, we saw his – I mean, that's his, that's his legacy. Yes. Throwing that's that what ball. I thought Stafford would do. He did. He yes. did it. Yes. He threw the ball that would have cemented his legacy as kind of just a jag, a slightly better Jared Goff. And Cooper Cup bailed him out, man. Like, I'm, we're watching Cooper Cup have this season that Jerry Rice had in 1988. We're watching I – mean, I thought the drop he had in the first half that probably goes for six, 
I was like, that's going to – Cooper Cup's had this amazing season. And it's going to come down to he dropped the one that he really needed to make. Oh, my God. He was sensational. Sensational. And in the end, he's the guy that got not Calvin Johnson. Cooper Cup is the guy that gets Matt Stafford over the hump. Stafford still has to win the Super Bowl. If they don't do that, and I think the Bengals are going to win. I mean, at this at this point, it's like, you going to bet against Joe Burrow? I'm not. I'm done. I, I got. I stopped betting against Joe Burrow in September of 2019, <laughs> <laughs> and now it's like I don't expect Joe Burrow to make the big mistake. You and I will still expect. Matt Stafford in the fourth quarter of the Super Bowl to make the throw that he made in the NFC championship game that he somehow didn't get punished by. Absolutely. But who are you rooting? Or do you care? Will you root for anybody? I think I'll, I'll go for, I'll go, go for the Rams. Well, a couple of reasons. Uh, Stafford um, for sure. Raheem Morris, um, who's yeah. you know, a guy that I like in, from, from Tampa and I'm hoping that he gets a, a second chance at an NFL thing. I mean, he's, he's coaching a great defense. I mean, it's, you know, I, I, his, his play calling sometimes risky, but I, I love the way he's calling it. Um, you know, that, you know, I don't know if I'm a semi OBJ fan, but I, I I'm, I'm okay. At, because I dislike Baker Mayfield so much. I'm totally okay with rooting for OBJ. If that means it, you know, Baker, uh, it, sh- it shows once again, his inadequacies as a quarterback. Um, so because of that, I probably go for OBJ. So I, I think I'll be all, all chips in on the Rams. Joe Burrow is the guy that the national media, I saw this tweet yesterday. He's the guy that the national media thought Baker Mayfield was because Baker Mayfield danced. Someone said, like, uh, oh, God, I'm dr- someone made like a 90s comparison to the uh, oh, the girl that was in Save the Last Dance. Mm-hmm. Did you ever see that movie? No, thank God. Julia no. Stiles. OK, they're like he danced oh, like Julia yeah, yeah, Stiles yeah, yeah. in the offseason and everybody tried to make him out to be Joe Burrow. He's the real deal, man. Look, for Anwar Richardson and myself, thanks for watching the Monday Overreaction Show. Before we let you go, do leave your comments in the comments section. We talked about a lot of different things. We'd love your thoughts on any of it. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and remember on Wednesday, we'll be doing it live for like three or four hours, and then we'll probably do it again later on in the afternoon once Devin Campbell has made an announcement, once there's been a, a press conference, presumably at Texas, like it's gonna be a fun week so be right shotgun with us all week long thanks to rogue apothecary for being the sponsor until tomorrow guys later